So while he's setting up, I'll uh, announce that our next speaker is uh, Joseph Lalman, who is going to be giving the second talk in today's session entitled A Type System for Privacy Policies. Uh, it's related to using types to uh, do a better job of verifying voting protocols. Okay, so did you, did you hear me? Yeah. So I will present our work on the type system for privacy properties uh, that we did with uh, Veronique Portier, Nicolas Grimm, and Matteo Maffei. So in this presentation, I'll be talking about uh, the formal verification of cryptographic protocols. The cryptographic protocols are um, programs that aim to secure communications, and to do so, they use cryptographic primitives, such as encryption or signatures, for instance, to provide security guarantees. And um, they are used everywhere for mobile payment, for mobile phones, for online payment, for on the web, for electronic voting. So because they are so widely used, it's um, actually very important to be able to, to verify that they are correct, that they provide the guarantees they are supposed to achieve. And to do that, we want to develop methods to, to, to prove them secure. So what kind of properties do we want to prove for security protocols? Well. The first class of properties is the category of trace properties. That is, those that can be uh, expressed as properties that must be satisfied by all traces, all, execu all executions of, the, of a protocol. This notably includes uh, reachability properties. So for instance, given uh, a protocol, can the attacker learn some secret message? With this class of property, we can express um, properties such as secrecy or authentication. But here uh, in our work, we are interested in another class of properties, that are equivalence properties. So this, these are um, somewhat more complex in that they require two, two protocols to be expressed. Because we say that uh, two protocols are equivalent when they are in indistinguishable for an attacker. So the attacker cannot distinguish which of the, of the two protocols is actually running. Uh, the, this class of property includes, uh, for instance, properties such as vote privacy, or anonymity, or unlinkability. And, um, well, let's have a look at the, the property of vote privacy. So in the case of electronic voting protocols, we want the vote of the, of the voters to be private. But what, I, what do I actually mean by that? Well, let's have a look at this example where uh, we have two voters, Alice and Bob, who, who vote for two candidates, zero or one. What we mean when we say that their votes have to be secret is not that the, the value of the vote is actually secret because the value of the vote is just a public value, zero or one. What we mean by the secrecy of the vote is that an attacker cannot uh, distinguish who voted for who. So we formalize this by saying that the attacker must not be able to distinguish between the scenario where Alice voted for zero and Bob for one, and the situation where Alice voted for one and Bob voted for zero. So we formalize this vote secrecy property as an equivalence property between these two situations. Um, so several uh, procedures and tools have already been proposed to be able to prove equivalence of protocols such as uh, Proverif, Tamarin, Akis, Apt, uh, and others. Um, they, each of these tools have um, different uh, specificities. They, they have, each have their own, um, their own advantages and drawbacks. For instance, Proverif and Tamarin can, can handle uh, an unbounded number of sessions of protocols, while the, the other tools only handle a bounded number of sessions. Tamarin is an interactive tool, while Proverif is fully automated, but in exchange it's more restrictive. Um, each of them have differences in the kind of cryptographic primitives they can, they can handle, but they mostly work by analyzing all the possible execution traces of the, of the protocols. Here, we're looking into a, a different method that works somewhat differently, and it's based on type systems. So the idea is that we want to design a type system that ensures that protocol that we type check with it uh, satisfies security properties. So using type system for, uh, for security protocols uh, has, al has already been done for trace properties. Um, and now we see how to, in our work, we, we show how to apply this, how to adapt this, um, these techniques to the problem of equivalence. That is that we, we design a type system such that if the protocols type check, they are indeed in equivalence. 
the advantage of using type systems to do this is that uh, it allows us to, to obtain efficient procedures, although they are incomplete, meaning that maybe sometimes the protocols are not equivalent, but we cannot uh, know it with a type system. Um, it also has the advantage of being modular in that we can extend it by adding new typing rules if we want to handle a larger class of protocol. And so the, the problem of using type systems for, uh, for equivalence properties is that usually when, uh, when, when doing typing, the, the way typing works is by over, over approximating the set of traces of the protocol um, using the abstraction of types. But uh, the, while this, this is sound for trace properties, it is not for equivalence because uh, while doing this, we might miss the fact that some traces are only possible for one of the, of the protocol and not the other one, which would break equivalence. So how do we, how do we manage to, to still um, design our type system? Well, we, we, our approach is composed of two steps. First, we, we have a type system that we design that allows us to type check two processes P and Q. In order to, we type check them in order to ensure that they, there are no leaks in the behaviors of the protocols, meaning that they have the, the, the attacker cannot observe any differences in their behaviors. And while doing this, we also collect all the symbolic messages that are output by the, by the protocols into what we call a constraint. And as a second step, once we're done with the type checking, we perform some additional checks on this constraint to ensure that there are no leaks in the messages that are sent. So I will get into more detail about it later, but what we mean by this is basically that we are checking for repetitions that would occur only on one side and not on the other side. For instance, here we have a, an example of a, of a constraint where we have a first, the first message that has been output is a variable x encrypted with a key k uh, on one side and a public value a encrypted with the same key on the other side. And then a message was output with a variable y or a, a public value b encrypted with the same key. And if somehow in the, in the execution of the protocol, we can have uh, the x equal y, the, so the variable x and y have the same value, then the, uh, the equivalence would be broken because the attacker could notice that um, the same message was output twice on one side, while two different messages were output on the other side. So this kind of situation where we have repetitions on one side and not on the other side is basically what we want to, to check on our constraints. So I will now present our, the, our main results that we proved for our type systems. First, we proved that it is sound, meaning that if we are able to type check two protocols with a constraint such that uh, for any instantiation of, of the variable occurring in the constraint, the, um, the, the, constraint, the instantiated constraint does not leak information for some definition of linking information that I will detail later. Uh, if so, then um, the, two, the two protocols are equivalent. And we also um, provide a way of checking the, that the constraint does nothing information. Uh, we have a procedure that, that ensures this. So this result has a few hypotheses. We assume that the, the protocols only use atomic long-term keys. Um, we also, only also have a, a fixed set of cryptographic primitives that include um, classic primitives, such as symmetric and asymmetric encryption, signature, hashing, pairing. And we are only uh, consider in this theorem protocols with a bounded number of sessions running in parallel, meaning that we have no replicated protocols. However, we are, uh, we are able to lift this last restriction, and that is our second main result. That allows us to, to type check an unbounded number of sessions of protocols. So basically, we prove that um, if, two, if we can type check two protocols, P and Q, with some constraint C, then we can also type check an unbounded, an arbitrary number of sessions of the protocols running in parallel with some constraints that, that is written here, bank, bank C, and that intuitively represents an, an arbitrary number of uh, copies of the, of the constraint C um, put together. And then we also, we also need to check that this bank C does not leak information. And we also prove that our, uh, our procedure for checking this can uh, ensure that by checking two copies of the, of the constraints, we get that the, the, um, the constraint bank C also uh, satisfies the, the required conditions. 
So with these two, two results and our soundness uh, theorem that I showed previously, we, we have a way of proving the equivalence of, uh, of protocols and for unbounded number of sessions. So I've now presented the main ideas of our work, and I will get a bit more into the technical side. So we are, first, we are working in a, in a symbolic model for security protocols. So we model messages as terms that are constructed using uh, a set of abstract uh, ideal cryptographic primitives. And we consider a symbolic attacker called the Delaviao attacker that controls the network and has abilities that are defined by deduction rules, as is usual in symbolic models. So we, for instance, the attacker knows the encryption of uh, a message with a key and knows the key, then he can decrypt the message and retrieve the, the, the value. We model our protocols as processes expressed in a process algebra that is similar to the applied pi calculus. So we have, um, here is the, the syntax of our protocols and our processes, and we can, uh, as is usual, generate new random nonces input or output messages to the, to the network, put processes in parallel, we have conditional branching, we can replicate protocols to, to put in parallel an unbounded number of, of sessions. And so this is the, the model we use to represent our protocols, and um, I will now show how we, how uh, a bit more in detail, how our type system works. So first, yes, so first we have to express the, the we have to define the properties we want our type system to prove. So the equivalence property. First, we define the equivalence for sequences of messages. So we model the, the knowledge of the attacker by um, what we call frames, which are sequen ordered sequences of messages uh, that have been output to the, to the network. So here we have an example with a frame containing some key case, some public value A, and some encrypted message. And we, we define the, the notion of static equivalence, which is the indistinguishability of frames. So I, I'm not giving here the, the formal definition, but what we mean by that is that um, basically any test that the attacker can perform on one of the frames gives the same result on the other uh, on the other frames. For instance, um, if we uh, encrypt two different public values A and B um, with some key K, as long as the key is secret, th this is fine because the attacker cannot know that uh, the values encrypted were different. However, if now we we put the encryption of A with key K twice on one side, while we encrypt two different values on the other side, even if the key is secret, this would, be non, it would not be equivalent because, again, the attacker is able to see that the same message occurs twice on one side and not on the other side. And finally, if we encrypt the different public value with a key but, that the, key is, but the key is not secret and the attacker knows it, then uh, the, the frames are also not equivalent because the, then the attacker would be able to see that by decrypting, he gets different values on either side. Now that we have defined equivalence for uh, for um, sequences of messages, we we want to define it the what we call equivalence for processes. So we consider the notion of trace equivalence. Uh, what we call a trace is composed of a sequence of observable actions performed by the by the process. So, for instance, inputting messages or outputting messages to the network that the attacker can observe, uh, and we all, it, it's also composed of a frame that consists of the messages that have been sent on the network. And the intuition of the, the trace equivalence is that any trace produced by one of the, of the process P can be mimicked by a, a trace of Q. And conversely, any trace produced by Q could be mimicked by a trace of P. So formally, we say that the, the two processes P and Q are trace equivalent. If for any trace of P, there is a corresponding trace of Q that has the same observable actions and such that the frames of output messages are statically equivalent. So this is the property we want to, to prove for processes using our type system. To do that, first we have a set of typing rules for messages that, give, that allow us to give types to, to the messages occurring in the, in the protocol. So these types uh, are constructed using uh, labels that represent the level of confidentiality and integrity of the, of the messages. For instance, uh, a public message would have a low confidentiality and low integrity level while a secret value would have a high confidentiality and high integrity level. We also consider types for keys that contain the, the, level, the security level, so the confidentiality and integrity level of the key, and the type of the messages it is supposed to encrypt. And we, we can construct messages 
uh, con construct other uh, other type uses these uh, these base types by pairing them, for instance. We we have a set of typing rules to give types to our uh, our messages. So here is the for instance the the rule for encryption with a secret key. When type checking the messages, we want to ensure that the messages sent are safe to output, which means we want to to to, type, to give them type low to ensure that they have a low confidentiality level. And we use the typing rules to ensure that they have a similar structure so that they don't directly break the equivalence. For instance, we would not allow to have a, a pair on one side and an atomic value on the other side because the attacker can immediately know that um, that's the, the messages are different. And uh, for instance, we would, we would allow um, these two messages to, to be output provided they are encrypted with, uh, with some secret key. We, which we would then be able to type with uh, the encryption rule presented here. We also use our typing rules to ensure that the, the keys used on both sides are the same, uh, which means we would only accept two, two, two output messages that are encrypted with the same key on the left and on the right, even if the keys are secret. So this is not required for equivalence. This is another approximation that we do in our uh, typing rules because uh, we we use this to ensure that even if at some other point in the in the protocol some agent tries to, to decrypt a message with key K, um, this either succeeds on both sides or fails on both sides. Because if we allowed messages uh, with different keys to be output, the decryption may succeed on one side and fail on the other side, which the attacker might be able to, to observe. So, here is again the rule for encryption, but this time you see I added the, the constraints that I was mentioning earlier. So we use our typing rules to, as is usual in type systems to establish invariants regarding the types of the keys. So we ensure that a key only, only encrypts um, the messages of the type that is supposed to encrypt. So we give the type T to messages encrypted by the key, which is the corresponding key in the, in the key type. But the, the important novel idea is that we collect constraints while typing, type checking our messages that consist of some parts of the messages that we, that we type check. For instance, here in the, in the, in the rule for encryption, we would, um, we would add uh, the encrypted messages to the constraint. I will explain in a few minutes why we, we need to do this. So now that we can type check messages, we have another typing, set of typing rules for um, for uh, processes that allow us to, type che to check several things. First, we check that all the, the, the output message, the messages that are output are of type low, so that they are safe to output. We also collect the constraints um, while type checking the processes. So here we have the rule for outputting a message, and we see that we, we type check, um, we type check the, the messages that are output to give them type low. And we collect the constraints that we add to the constraints generated by the, the continuation process. And finally, we also use the typing rules to ensure that the, the processes progress in the same way, which means that they accept inputs or outputs at the same time. And they follow branches that are typically equivalent when, uh, when um, they encounter a conditional branching. So with this set of typing rules, we can type check our processes and then as I mentioned earlier, we, need, we have some additional conditions to check on the constraints. So then we may ask, why do we need the constraints? Why couldn't we uh, actually do these checks directly in the, in the typing rules while type checking the, the processes? Well, the problem is that the, the typing rules only perform local checks on the, on the parts of the, of the process or the messages they are checking. But this is not sufficient for equivalence, for instance, if we have a, a public value A and a public value B and we encrypt them with a secret key, this is fine to output the A encrypted with K on one side and B encrypted with K on the other side because the key is secret, the attacker cannot see the difference. It, it is also fine to output A encrypted with K on both sides because the attacker is the same message, the attacker cannot see the difference. However, if we put those two messages together, then the equivalence is broken because the attacker can again observe the fact that the messages um, the same messages are put twice on one side, and two different messages are put on the other side. So to, to be able to prevent this situation where repetition occurs only on one side, we need a global view 
of the of the messages output, which the the constraint provide us. Here in this example, we would get the the constraint um, containing the the two pairs of messages, and uh, we need we can check on this constraint that there are no unwanted repetitions. So what we do once we're done with the type checking is that uh, we take all the messages that have been uh, collected in the constraints while typing, and we check that it is consistent. Uh, what we mean by that is that for any instantiation of the, of the variables in the constraint, the instantiated const constraint should not leak anything, which means that if we take the frame consisting of the messages on the left side of the constraint and the frame consisting of the messages on the right side and instantiate them their variables, the two frames we obtain should be uh, statically equivalent. So we provide a, a procedure to check the, the, um, the consistency of constraints, which uh, together with the typing rules allows us to prove equivalence of protocols. So we implemented our, uh, our type system. Um, we, we provide a prototype implementation where we implement a type checker and the procedure for constraints. Um, here in this table, we can see uh, that we applied the, our procedure to a few key exchange protocol from the, from the literature. And we compared it to other existing tools. And we can see that we are able to, to consider many more um, sessions in, of the protocols running in parallel compared to, many, to most of the other tools. Um, here is a detailed look at, the, at one of the, the, the tests, that is the Nedam Schroeder uh, symmetric key protocol. And we can see that um, not only can we consider more sessions than the other tools before, the, before running out of time or memory, we are also order of magnitude uh, faster than the other tools. Uh, we can see that we do not suffer as much as m most of the other tools from the, the, the state explosion problems that they have. And that is one of the advantages of using type systems to, to prove equivalence. So these results were for a bounded number of sessions. We also uh, used our, uh, our implementation on unbounded protocols with an unbounded number of sessions running in parallel and compared it to the Proverif tool. So we can see that we have uh, comparable performances to Proverif, which is, uh, which is great, considering Proverif has been very well optimized for many years. And we also were also able to prove an example that Proverif could not prove, that is the Helios voting protocol with an unbounded number of, uh, of sessions and without using private channels to, to model it. Um, and this is the, the, the first uh, automated proof of this, uh, of this protocol. So to conclude, um, we propose a new, a new approach to the automatic proving of equivalence properties for security protocols that is based on type systems and um, constraints that we collect when typing. Uh, we are able to handle uh, with our system a bounded and an unbounded number of sessions. And we provide uh, an efficient implementation that can be, that, that can be used to, to the check protocols. So as future work, we are interested in looking to to lift the, the limitations that I mentioned earlier. Um, we are working on being able to use keys that are not uh, long-term keys, so keys that are not fixed. We would also like to be able to, to use different keys on the left and on the right, and to, to be able to, con to consider a larger class of protocols with a different structure on both sides. Uh, some other future work that we're interested in, we're interested in uh, would be uh, computational soundness and composition results, because the idea is that our um, our uh, approach checks uh, conditions that are stronger than one, what is actually needed for uh, for uh, symbolic equivalence. So we hope that maybe this uh, this kind of approach could also give stronger guarantees in computational instead of symbolic models, and uh, being in also have results about being able to to compose protocols together because we check stronger um, stronger conditions that what we need to just to for them to just be equivalent. So that's for me. Um, would it be possible for this approach to work for protocols inc that include loops or protocols that can return to earlier states? Because it would seem like you'd end up with an infinitely large type to check. So you mean to have protocols containing states? 
so TLS is a yeah. protocol and it can return to a previous state and it can run infinitely long and still be one session. Yes, so we cannot, so with this approach currently, we cannot handle protocols that have a global state uh, that is preserved between, between executions. Uh, you can't now or you don't think it's possible? Um, I think it might be possible, but we, we don't know how to do it uh, for now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, do you think your approach might be used to um, try to repair the protocol? To, to what? To repair the protocol. I, I can't. Sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, so, for example, if a protocol does not satisfy the security properties, mm -hmm. how can a user like use your tool to um, try to repair? Ah. Um, well, we can't really because the thing is that our approach is incomplete, meaning that if the protocol doesn't satisfy the property, I mean, what we can see is that our protocol would not be, we would not be able to type check it, but this doesn't mean that it is not uh, secure. Okay. Maybe it, uh, the protocol actually is secure, but we are not able to type check it because uh, our approach was not sufficient. So yeah, we, we are not able to, to detect attacks on protocols or to repair them.